So this is quite timely. Full disclosure, this list is being written the day after what happened on this week's Raw. So it may be that new developments come to light before this goes out on Sunday, but yeah, Gosh, wrestling is a funny old business, isn't it? With creative disputes leading to changes in the show happening in real time. Crosswords can lead to split decisions, which can lead to, oh, whoopsie whoopsie. Now the advertised main event of the show isn't happening anymore, leaving fans staring at the product like a magic eye puzzle, waiting for the word shoot or work to appear from the maelstrom of squiggles. Needless to say, this isn't the first time it's happened. It's even affected the commentary table in the past with Jerry Lawler up and walking out of the company the day after No Way Out 2001 and missing the biggest WrestleMania of all time, let's try and separate the fact from the fiction of some of the most tumultuous nights in wrestling history. I'm Adam Haling from Parts of Unknown. Here are 10 wrestlers who walked out on the show. And if you'd like to walk in to our show, you can subscribe to Parts of Unknown. These subscriber drivers are getting better every week. But genuinely, subscribing means a lot to us. So please do it. Thank you. Goodbye. Number 10, Sasha Banks and Naomi. Let's get into the reason this list exists then. Monday Night Raw was thrown into chaos this week when Sasha Banks and Naomi, the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, walked out on the show, leaving their rather bad-looking belts behind as they did so, despite both being advertised for the main event number one contender's six-woman match. What's even crazier is that Naomi, who followed Sasha's initial walkout in solidarity, was supposed to win that match and face Bianca Belair for the title of Hell in the Cell. It's the latest in the Sasha Banks vs. WWE WWE saga that will someday make for a very interesting documentary, which we really hope won't be produced by WWE with their particular history of catty little exposés ally, The Ultimate Warrior. Corey Graves branded the two as unprofessional live on air before WWE released a statement that sh stirred the pot even more by alleging they were uncomfortable sharing the ring with two other wrestlers, in this case, per Fightful, Asuka and Becky, despite that being refuted by those close to the situation, Jesus Christ. This comes after Sasha requested her release from the company back in 2019, a release that was then denied this time around who knows but it's an ugly situation that we hope works out okay for everyone involved number nine the midnight express back to slightly more comfortable days of yesteryear now we can talk about things with a bit more levity wait a minute this story involves internet lightning rod jim Cornette. fabulous gonna be a spicy comment section this week the midnight express the team of stan lane and bobby eaton managed by racket wielding opinion generator jim Cornette, were not best pleased with their position in wcw in 1990 having already once left the company due to the dreaded creation differences the year before. In October, on a TV taping day, tensions flared up again. The Midnight Express turned up to the tapings to discover that they, unknown to them, were not scheduled to compete, which meant that the wrestlers missed a day with their families for no reason, before then discovering that on the next day of tapings, they would wrestle several matches and lose them all. Confronting WCW's booker at the time, Ole Anderson, Cornette expressed dissatisfaction, if that's a thing you can imagine Jim Cornette doing, with Anderson telling him, if you don't like it, leave. Cornette called his bluff and walked out on the spot with Stan Lane following suit. Suit. Number eight, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels doing something unprofessional in the mid-90s. I will not stand for such wild and baseless accusations. Not really. Shawn had recently received his honorary doctorate from Prick University, and during his infamous backstage beef with Bret Hart, just upped and went home one day. In mid-1997, while Michaels was tag team champions with Steve Austin, no less, the Heartbreak Kid had a physical altercation with Bret Hart backstage as a result of the infamous Sunny Days promo. And in that altercation, allegedly Hart ripped out some of Shawn's beautiful hair. And look, come for the man if you must, but leave his beautiful hair out of it. That beautiful hair didn't hurt anyone. As a result of that fight, hours before the roar after King of the Ring in June, Michaels walked out of the company and didn't come back for over a month, forcing WWE to put tag straps on Austin and Dude Love. Thankfully, that was the end of the Sean and Brett problems, and nothing bad between the two ever happened again. Number seven, Raven. Getting frustrated with management? That's so Raven. Walking out on WCW? That's so Raven. Back in the late 90s, the wrestling ambassador for Jorts and Luke Owen's forever style icon, Raven was unhappy with his position in WCW. That seemed to be going around in the 90s, especially in the late 90s when backstage politicking was rife and stunts like the finger poke of doom were really starting to apply liquid nitrogen to the company's two-year hot streak. To address mounting dissatisfaction, my dad Eric Bischoff called a meeting backstage with all WCW wrestlers and told them that, to paraphrase, if they didn't quit moaning, he would turn the car around and there would be no Cape Canaveral for anybody, saying that if anyone wasn't happy, then there was the door. In response, Raven, and only Raven, stood up and walked out and was immediately granted his release. 
face. That is so Johnny Polo. Number six, Justin Gabriel. Unbelievable that the man who was told to wrestle in a bunny suit might want to leave the company that told him to do that. If I was told to present my fantasy booking videos in a holiday armadillo costume, I would just be thankful for the opportunity. Don't know, Ollie. I will leave. In 2015, on the last episode of Raw before the Royal Rumble, Justin Gabriel, after turning up to the arena to find once again they had no plans to feature him, decided on the spot, eh, I'm done, and went home. He left the arena, got on a flight, and flew away. In between flights, Gabriel received a call from the then head of talent relations saying, actually, we have a segment for you. Where are you? To which Gabriel told him he was no longer in the building and also, goodbye forever, I guess. He was granted his release during Rumble weekend and he was free to once again gamble about in Mr. McGregor's garden, causing no end of headaches for the elderly horticulturalist. Number five, Jeff Jarrett and Road Dog from Bunnies to Dogs now. And honestly, for a WWE Hall of Famer, Jeff Jarrett sure did carve out a legacy for himself of telling WWE to do one. Years before his famous refusal to drop the IC belt on his way to WCW without getting that paper, he also left the company years earlier in the new generation era, this time taking his musical friend with him. Double J and the roadie, the man who'd go on to become road dog Jesse James, were an effective heel double act in 1995, so effective that the two really didn't want to break up. However, that was the plan, and at WWE's second ever In Your House pay-per-view, tempers boiled over. Jarrett allegedly asked McMahon to change the creative plans. Vince refused, although Bruce Pritchard denies that Jeff Jarrett spoke to Vince before what happened next. So Jarrett went out, dropped the icy title to Shawn Michaels as plan, then he and the roadie immediately walked out of the arena, announcing they were quitting as they went. At least Vince managed to get the belt off him this time, I suppose. Number four, Neville. Adrian Neville, then called Neville, then called Pac, then called P, is a very, 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 very good wrestler, which might go some way towards explaining why when the king of the cruiserweight showed up to an episode of Raw in October 2017 and was told he would be losing a cruiserweight title match against Enzo Amore for the second time since Enzo pinned him for the belt at No Mercy a few weeks earlier, he said, I don't want to do that, you know. I'd rather be gone in home. Evidently, the idea that Enzo, whose kayfabe gimmick at the time was is bad wrestler, should not be cruiserweight champion, could hand one of the best cruiserweights in the world multiple losses did not sit well with Neville and he walked out on the show never to return. In true WWE fashion, they replaced him with Kalisto, who then won the title as an extra spicy little f*** you to Neville for leaving the way he did. Fun fact, this was during a weird time where WWE was ending Raw with the Cruiserweights every single week because the third hour was less important to them than the second. But yeah, weeks of main event Enzo Amore taking a dump on the Cruiserweight division. What a weird company. Number three, Gail Kim. This is so weird. Most of the entries on this list are about moments where wrestlers walked out on the show backstage. This moment is about when a wrestler just straight up walked out of an entire match. In the mid to late 2000s, Gail Kim helped to revolutionize women's wrestling over in TNA, having a still to this day highly acclaimed feud with Awesome Kong and spearheading the knockouts division, which, despite the name, was pretty darn great in a less than stellar time for women's wrestling. WWE snapped her up for a return, but repeatedly refused to crown her champion and then just stapled her to Daniel Bryan his arm candy, but I suppose a vegan option for arm candy. Things came to a head in August 2011 when Gail Kim was entered into a Divas Battle Royal and was booked to be eliminated in the first minute, correctly reasoning that actually the only person here that deserves to beat me is me. Gail Kim eliminated herself from the Battle Royal by sliding out of the ring and just walking to the back, out of the company, never to be seen in WWE again, which is pretty f***ing baller. Number two, CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. CM Punk, CM... Number one, Steve Austin. CM Punk might be the benchmark of taking your ball and going home in the modern era, skipping out on the Raw the day after the 2014 Rumble owing to long-running health and creative problems, but he was following the blueprint of a legendary walkout a decade earlier. In June 2002, Steve Austin skipped out on Raw for the second time in two months, frustrated by his position in the company and baffling creative decisions like having Brock Lesnar being planned to defeat him on free TV. In a move reminiscent of how WWE handled the Sasha and Naomi situation, Austin was blasted live on air. Vince, Rock, and JR, even JR, all buried Austin for being unprofessional live on TV, including an almost funereal segment where Vince left a can of beer in the ring in an incredibly shrewd bit of emotional puppet mastering. It's a situation where, like the majority of these cases, you can see there's fault on both sides. Bad creative must be frustrating and often seem callous at times, but jeopardizing a show that's worked on by so many more people than the creative team? I don't know. You come down more on the side of wrestlers, I suppose, because obviously they risk their necks for these stories that they hate. But man, at the end of the day, I just want everyone to be making something they're proud of because the alternative 
sounds pretty sad. And that's our list. What do you think is the most memorable wrestling walkout? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to Parts for Known for more silly wrestling content. And never forget to jam that jam.